Hi everyone, Emily here for another Facebook Live, doing this pretty much every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday around 3 p.m. my time. I'm in Arizona, so it's California time, PST. I'm a little late today because I've actually been on quite a few interviews and calls today. I've talked to Bangladesh and Dubai and all kinds of cool places. And, uh, and now I'm talking to you. And it's just the coolest thing, honestly, that we can do this. You know, talk to each other and, and connect with each other around the world. So today I decided that I wanted to do, I want to talk about control. This idea of control. Uh, what can we control? What can't we control? And what happens? You know, what difference does it make? How we feel when it comes to what we can and can't control. Obviously, I think there are pretty obvious reasons why I'm talking about control or a sense of lack of control and how it affects us because of this global pandemic that we're in. And there are so many things we can't control or rather it's like slamming us in the face, the fact that we can't control a lot of things because the reality is even if there weren't a global pandemic, we there are still things we cannot control, whether it's in our lives or it's in the world. And it can feel really overwhelming and really anxiety inducing and so especially now when it's like you know oh just going to the grocery store you know you could you could risk your own life by catching this virus and you don't know how you'll react versus how other people react etc etc so again there's a lot we can control there's a lot we cannot control though and what that does is it brings up all this anxiety so of course what am I gonna do those of you who've seen my Facebook lives before um, we're gonna talk about what's what's really going on underneath the surface with that um, and where that's coming from when it what it has to do with the X powers, those inner struggles. That's the term that I use for our, our, in, our inner struggles. And in my work, The New Self Empowerment, I've discovered that there are three types and they're universal. We all have these within us. So if this is your first time watching and you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I have that within me and I have that within me. Yes, we all do. Okay. We all have these, these X powers within us. So anyway, this idea of control, well, okay, so those of you who are familiar or those of you who even aren't familiar, and if you wanna to go to my website, that's it's all right there, the new selfempowerment.com. So let's look at these. Let's see, the three X power types are named defenders, wounded, and oh, look at that, controllers. <laughs> so clearly, let's see, if it isn't clear to you, you know, which one of these do you think is most at the root of our impulse to control, I wonder. Well, to be honest with you, there are two, but we'll start with the obvious one. The obvious one is inner controllers. I named these X power types according to their primary, their MO, you know, their primary behavior. So defenders like to defend, woundeds feel very wounded and hurt, and controllers, uh, like to control, find some way to exert some kind of power or control over us or a part of us. And so I've talked about controllers before. A classic inner controller is an inner critic. So it's a part of us that might be tearing us down or telling us that we're stupid or telling us that we're not good enough. Um, but it can also be a part that tries to push us to succeed and push to make things happen. But basically, these three, and I haven't really shared this with you all yet, but these three represent are three basic reactions to fear. They are all distortions of our M powers, okay? So we have our three M powers, they're all distortions, but they are, they are parts of us that have been impacted by fear and pain. These are basically our three, re our three reactions to fear. So when we have fear come at us, we wanna protect ourselves, right? Push it away, defend ourselves, or any kind of threat, perception of threat. Uh, perceived threat. Wounded, we might want to pull away and protect ourselves, um, you know, or feel powerless or hide away. Then the controllers might be, it's that impulse that we have to change it, to fix the situation, to make a difference, to affect some kind of change, okay? So this is just a simple survival mechanism. It's a protective mechanism that we all have. So since the topic today, of course, is the idea of control or lack of control, um, controllers are obviously at the at the core of that. But at the same time, so well, let me explain this actually. Controllers, so controllers are basically this part of us, the impresario that gets distorted by fear and by pain. So the impresario is that very left brain part of us that's very, you know, wants to fix it, wants to figure it out. Um, and also it's a part of us that's all about survival. So it's always making sure that we have everything that we need and, you know, including money or, you know, instrumental needs. But when it gets impacted by fear and pain or when it, it, it can feel that fear has popped up inside of us, 
it's trying to, it tries to protect us and take care of us. But if it gets to become too chronic, it can become, an, uh, parts of it can become inner controllers, where they, tr they basically, it like senses we're scared, it doesn't want us to feel scared, so it's gonna do whatever it can to try to fix it or to figure it out, okay? And so that's that impulse inside of us. It's just trying to protect us from pain and fear, this controller part. But then, always, what's really going on underneath the surface of that controller? It's the wounded. So it's actually the sense of wounding and the sense of hurt or defenselessness or feeling out of control or powerless or despairing or helpless or these kinds of things. Well, a, you know, so our woundeds may feel that way or we may have a wounded that really feels that way. Well, you know, other parts of us don't want us to feel that way because they're, they're afraid that if we, all, if we just stay stuck in this place, then we won't survive. And so that's a lot of times where those inner controllers that, that, that have become chronic can step in and try to fix it for us or try to control the situation to give us back that sense of power, okay? So, and I'll give you an example. Uh, well, also I should explain that a lot of times, um, and I did say this before, that for example, with this coronavirus, we actually have, what can end up happening is that our old wounds get triggered. So our old traumas get triggered. So especially when it comes to control or lack of control, if we've experienced something in our lives, and we all have, where we felt a lack of control or we felt a sense of powerlessness, we're going to have these parts of us that pop up. And for some of us, it may be this part. I mean, I've had definitely had like inner controller wanting to fix everything and control and, you know, make sure everyone's protected. And it's gone a little overboard sometimes, you know, but it's just reacting to my fear and my, my fear that, you know, one of us will get sick or something will happen, right? So anyway, and then what's underneath that is it's trying to mitigate the fear and pain of the inner woundeds. I'll give you an example though of like, for example, um, let me just put it this way. The reality is there are some things we can control and some things we can't control. And one of the um, one of the examples that came to me is someone I know who, for example, when I look at the weather, right, is the weather something any of us can control? I mean, unless you are God, no, right? Unless you are Mother Nature, probably not. And if you can control it, let me know. I would like to know you. But the point is, like, I personally don't pay much attention to the weather because I see it as something that, like, well, I can't control it. Um, so if I have to go out, I'll look at the weather to see what it is, and then I'll, you know, change what I wear. But I'm not necessarily going to, you know, be anxiously worried about the weather. Well, I know someone who she is terrified of tornadoes. She's like always anxiously checking the weather. And so she's, cause she's scared of tornadoes and major storms. Well, this didn't come out of nowhere. When she was a little girl, she had a major, like she was severely traumatized when there was a tornado warning in her area and everything got really dark and she was a little girl and she was at school and she had to go hide under the under the staircase. In fact, I'm from Texas, that's what we had to do. We had to hide under the staircase um, when they would run these drills or when there were actual tornadoes. The point is this woman, you know, she had to hide under the staircase and she was so terrified and so traumatized because she didn't know where her family was and she didn't know how to protect them and she wanted to be near them. So the point is she had that experience when she was a little girl. And so now ever since then, what does she do? She's always checking the weather. She's always getting really nervous and really anxious and scared whenever there's a tornado. She's, she warns her friends, she warns everybody. So even though on an intellectual level, she knows I can't control the weather, there's still that part of her that's been traumatized by the fact that she was in such a powerless place. So it's that same idea, right? Right? That was the wounded that formed inside of her as a result of the trauma of the tornado and the, and the, the threat of death and the threat of her, uh, her family dying. But then that controller evolved inside of her. This is what it sounds like. I haven't worked with this person. But it sounds like that controller evolved inside of her to try to mitigate this sense of fear and to try to protect the people around her. Okay? So we all have this thing within us. Um, I even discovered, interestingly enough, you know, in a weird way, just in the past few years, I discovered that I had an inner controller that was doing something a little different for me. So, you know, I tend to be very emotionally sensitive. I don't like to be criticized. I don't know anybody who does. But, you know, some of us are more affected by criticism than others. And I happen to be someone who, like, when I was a little girl, I was very, very sensitive to criticism and very afraid of getting hurt. And I wanted everybody to like me and I wanted to please everybody. Well, I realized just in the past few years of doing my own work, on myself is that 
I had developed these parts inside of me that were all about trying to, you know, being nice to everybody and just being kind to everybody, even if they weren't kind and nice to me. And then when there were certain people in my life who then were not kind and nice to me and I was having these reactions to them, it really forced me to go, okay, what's going on with me? Well, sure enough, it's because I had certain controllers inside of me that were trying to, you know, get me to always be nice to everybody and not hurt anybody's feelings and not upset anybody. Not just because I didn't want to hurt their feelings, but I was trying to control their reaction towards me right and i thought on an unconscious level if i can get them to be nice to me if i can get them to not be mean to me then i'll be okay and then i won't feel hurt so it's kind of an interesting thing again it was like controllers that inside of me that were trying to protect me because they didn't want me to feel hurt like i had so much when i was a little girl so that really goes to the question though of what can we control and what can't we control right the reality is there are some things we can control and there are some things we can't control. Even in this whole virus situation, there are some things we can control and some things we cannot control. And my answer to that is, you know, do we have control? My answer is yes and no. And, and I have an overarching reason for that. I really believe in the both and of life. That very few answers are either this or either that, that most things are both and. There are some things in this case that we have control over and others things that we don't. Same thing with people. It's, you know, or, or, or rather with ourselves and other people. Can we control other people? Not necessarily. In fact, a lot of times we have this illusion of control. We think that just because someone responded to us in a certain way, that somehow we had some control or we had some impact, and maybe we did, but that person is still making the choice whether how they wanna to respond to us. So the truth is we can't control others, but we can control ourselves. We, can't, we, we, can, we can control how we perceive others and ourselves and other situations, okay? But we can't necessarily control how other people perceive us or other people's actions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we can control our responses and we can control the choices that we make. Now, here's the funny thing about this though that I discovered. And if you all saw my talk earlier this week, I think it was on Monday, that was about conspiracy theories and the fact that there are a lot of conspiracy theories going on right now. Um, and it's directly related to, to, there were three main reasons that I listed about why people believe in conspiracy theories and the fact that they come up during periods where there's some kind of global incident um, or there are periods of high distress and uncertainty. That's what we're in right now. So of course we have a lot of conspiracy theories. But what's interesting is that one of the main things, one of the key elements of why people believe in conspiracy theories is because of the desire for control and security. Conspiracy theories can give their believers a sense of control and security, especially when the alternative, the possible reality, feels more threatening, okay? So it's interesting because there's a lot we can't control right now. But what determines how we feel in response to this situation does have to do with our sense of, of power and agency. So they did, and I, and I got this from an email from a guy named Rabbi Brian. And he wrote, he wrote this, and thank you, Natasha Berlski, by the way, for, for, for introducing me to this guy. He shared this mouse experiment, and he, ta he talks about um, that that they he set up this that they did a study where they set up these mice and they had some mice basically believe that they had some sense of agency or control i forgot how they set it up and then the other set of nice uh mice found that they didn't have any sense of control or agency they found a difference in how they interacted and by the way neither sets of mice actually had any control so it was all about the mice's perception of control or power or agency in their lives. That's what they wanted to see. What was the impact on these on these mice? And it said that the result, let's see. So the levers for both subjects were non-functional. Um, let's see. Wait, where is it? Oh, shoot, I don't have the whole thing. Uh, where is it? I, I don't know where I put it. But anyway, the point is that the first set of mice, the, the set that didn't believe it had any control, it turns out that they functioned worse. They were like, I don't know, like defecating randomly. Like they were much more anxious. The ones that felt that they had no sense of control. Whereas the ones that felt that they did have a sense of control, it said the ones with perceived agency found the experiment to be less annoying and they did better on cognitive tests. So 
even though the, you know, the reality is there are some things we can control and some things we can't control. How we perceive our sense of control, our sense of agency has a huge impact on how well we function and how well we respond to situations. Whether we fall prey to conspiracy theories or super, super fear-based thinking or whether we really find ways of discovering power in our own lives or whether we really start, really trust ourselves in these various situations. So I thought that was really fascinating. But what they also discovered, for example, with conspiracy theories is it says the problem is that, that, that this illusion of control, okay? So it's not about having the illusion of control. It's really just a more about your sense of power from within is the way I see it. It doesn't work because as I shared on Monday, encouraging believers to pursue their, um, it, oh, that it actually, what happened was that people who believe in conspiracy theories, it was like an, an illusion of a sense of control and they ended up feeling more anxious because they believed that it was some grand conspiracy still out of their control that was sort of controlling everything. And so what they found is that when they encourage believers to pursue their goals and take action in their own personal lives, that this reduced their feelings of powerlessness and thus the tendency to believe in conspiracy theories. And so, and, and even recently, just the other day, I, I, I posted um, a quote, one of my own quotes that said, anxiety can be a sign that you're giving your power over to someone or something. Reclaim your power and you'll feel less anxious. So anxiety can be a sign that you're giving your power over to someone or something. Reclaim your power, you'll feel less anxious. So therefore, the stronger our sense of control or agency or power we have in our lives, the more at peace and empowered we feel and the better we function, okay? So when it comes to control or not control, there are some things we can control, there are some things we can't control. If we focus too much on what we cannot control, we will simply increase, this is my perception, my, my belief, based on my work and all of that, we will simply increase our lack of um, our lack of sense of power and agency and our lack of our sense of control over our own lives. So it really has to do with what we focus on versus what we don't focus on, where we choose to actually um, make choices, how we make choices, on what we make choices. So I'm gonna leave you with this question for yourself uh, because a lot of times what can happen is that we are we unconsciously give our power over to things that we cannot control. And that simply increases our anxiety and our lack of, our sense of powerlessness and our lack of agency. So rather than us going around the world feeling, you know, all feeling like that, and I understand there's a lot to feel anxious about, what if we were to just stop? And I invite you to do this, and I'm gonna do this too, is ask yourself, maybe like get a piece of paper and write this down, and ask yourself, what can I control? Right now, within myself, in my environment, what can I control? Over what do I have actual power? And I don't mean like trying to control like in sort of dominant way, but really that I can have an impact on. So what can I control? What can I, who can I impact? What can I have an impact on? So that's the first question. The second question is, what can't I control? Because there are a lot of things we can't control. So for example, with the coronavirus situation, you know, what can I control? I can control whether or not I wear a mask. I can control whether or not I wear gloves. I can control whether or not I wash my hands. I can control how many times I go into a store. I can control how close I get to other people. There are certain things I can control. There are other things I can't control. I can't control who else has the virus. I can't control who else coughs on me. I can't control, you know, who parks next to me. I can't control all kinds of things, okay? So we can look, let's look at what we can control, but then also look at what we can't control. And then my third question for you is, how would it feel if I let go of what I can't control and only focus on what I can? How would you feel? How differently would you feel if you, when you look at that list of what you can't control and be really honest with yourself, what can you not control? And as you look at that and just take a deep breath and be like, okay, so what good does it do to really stress or freak out about something I cannot control? And then let yourself just sink into that and honor that there's a lot that's scary that's going on, but really also honor the reality that there are some things we can control, there are some things we can't control. And then secondarily go, okay, look at the list of what can I control? Well, you know, how would it feel 
if I were to focus on those things instead? How would it feel if I were to just sort of make the changes that I know that I can make? I don't have to be scared about it. I don't have to be anxious or freak out. I can just go, oh, I can control whether or not I do this. Or, you know what? What can I control? Well, I can control whether or not I plant another plant in the garden. I control whether or not I write that person an email. I control whether or not, you know, I reach out to this person. I made a choice to do this Facebook Live. So there are certain things that we can choose and we can control. So how would it feel? Third question, how would it feel if you were to let go of what you can't control and only focus on really what you can and really do your best to make a difference that way? So... I hope this is helpful. As always, ask me questions. Love you. Stay healthy. Mwah. Big hugs all around. Talk to you again soon.